Eat? We've been taught not to eat. We've been taught that eating is the worst thing we can do. We've all been starving for all these years. Oh my gosh, what's the truth? What is it? What do we do? You gotta spend some time with me here in a food seminar at the Susan Powder Exercise Studio in Dallas, Texas. Come along. Now you've got to hear this. We have focused on one thing. Food, 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 food. We're inundated with it. The problem is that we have been taught incorrectly. We have been basically lied to, ripped off, and taken for big rides. You can spend a lot of time getting angry at that, and I did spend a lot of time being angry about that, but it's really quite a waste of energy. Take it from me. Or you can learn the truth, and you can figure out what does work. If that doesn't work, and we all know, I'm not going to spend much time on the fact that diets don't work. And if we took this room alone, and it's not that big a room, and we calculated, number one, how many diets between all of us we've been on in the last, let's say, five years, and number two, how much money we've spent on diets, we all throw up on the spot because it's really amazing. And how many different ones we've tried. What's sad is the one that doesn't work when you go to another, I would go back to that one, let me switch to another one. I mean, I have bathed in seaweed thinking that it would take the fat off my back. I have. And I've consumed those little cups of wheatgrass like 10 times a day, thinking that it was going to pour the fat off my thighs. And if I could have afforded liposuction, I would have done it. I absolutely would have done it, but I couldn't afford it, and it just didn't work for me at the time. It doesn't work, and it doesn't work because of an interesting concept. You guys got a little card when you walked in the door. I want to read something with you just so we can begin by understanding the most basic concepts here. The reason all that stuff doesn't work is because food does not and never will make you fat. It is not food that makes you fat. Fat makes you fat. So don't worry about the food. Don't worry about the calories. Worry about the fat. This chart is a daily caloric consumption chart. It's yours to stare at 15 times a day because when you really understand this concept, it's kind of nauseating. If you are, take the first line, if you are 100 pounds, nobody is 100 pounds. And if you are, I don't care about you. <laughs> I wasn't 100 pounds when I'm two, I wasn't 100 pounds. If you are 100 pounds, I'm going with you. Is what I have to say. But let's say you are. Now, that's not true because I know the 100 pound people have to get on to it. Okay, <laughs> if you are 100 pounds, 100 pounds, and let's say that you are at a low activity level. Do you know what a low activity level means? That means you do nothing. That means you get up in the morning, take your shower, and get on the sofa. Now remember, you weigh 100 pounds and you're not doing much. If you are 100 pounds and you do basically nothing, you need to take in minimum 1,300 calories a day just to survive. Now, this is a very conservative chart. Very conservative chart. Now, stay with me. Let's assume that you are more than 100 pounds, which wouldn't take much. If you notice on this chart, the higher the calories and the higher the activity level, the higher the weight and the higher the activity level, the more calories you need to consume. Now, this is the exact opposite of everything you've ever been taught. I know this, but I'm telling you this is what I've done. This is what every human being does that is lean, strong, and healthy, because this is the truth. Why we haven't been taught this, I don't know. I think we need to start a national mutiny and, like, walk in with swords and guns and things and all these great programs and, you know, hold them all hostage and all that kind of stuff. But we'll, we'll do that later. In the meantime, understand the concept. If you are minimum weight, minimum activity, you have to consume more than any diet I've ever heard of. I don't know many diets that don't go below 13, 1400 calories. So you start into this five, six, seven, eight hundred calorie day insanity. Now let's get realistic here because we, even if anybody is 100 pounds, we hate them anyway. So let's get a little real. Let's go to what I see. The average weight I see is 160 to about 210. There are lots of women and men that are 160 to about 210. Let's say you're 170 and let's say you have a moderate activity level. You need a minimum of 1,900 calories to sustain. Now, guys, how many diet programs have you walked into weekly and they say, well, the first thing we're going to do is increase your calorie level to about 2,000 a day? <laughs> <laughs> so everything that is attached to that old philosophy is wrong. The weighing in is wrong. The scaling, the charting, the putting your food on one of these things that you got to figure out, it's all wrong because it's the wrong system. 
to all the little procedures that we've been taught. Don't eat after 6 o'clock at night. You've got to eat in the morning and not at night. You've got to do this and that. You've got to wear, you've got to set. It's all wrong. Wipe it all out. It's going to be difficult. It's not that difficult because what it's going to be replaced with is so good. But try and wipe it out of your brain because it's wrong. I am 114 pounds. I am a very high activity level, not because I work out eight hours a day, because I own a business that requires a lot of time and energy. I have two children. I have an ex-husband and a current husband. And that's what takes most of my energy. <laughs> not the kids, they really don't. Not the business, no, no. It's the men in my life that are driving me insane. So I would say that I'm off the chart as far as activity level is concerned. I'm going to tell you guys this, and you're going to, it's going to take your breath away, but it's the truth. I consume anywhere from 3,500 to 5,000 calories a day. Why? No, this is, <laughs> let's compare bodies. <laughs> Why do I look like this when I was 260 pounds, and why don't you? And why didn't I for the first 30 years of my life? Well, I didn't because I was doing the wrong thing. Like you were doing the wrong thing. Like I was at all well, doing the wrong thing. Food does not make you fat. Period. The end. It does not. There's one thing that'll make you fat. It's fat that makes you fat. Now, the first way to eliminate fat from your life is to understand what it is first. We don't understand what it is. I barely understand what it is. And I've been living, breathing, and eating fat. Not eating fat. Living, breathing, and not eating fat. We've got to first understand what it is, and then we've got to find out where, where it is, how to find it, where, where is it. You know, we're being kind of slipped a lot of fat. Then we've got to find out what we are willing to and aren't willing to give up in, in, in the fat department. Once you decrease the fat that you're putting in your mouth, remember there's three, there's eating, breathing, and movement. Once you decrease the fat, which is the eating part, once you increase the movement, and once you start to breathe, there's no way your body can't be whatever size, whatever strength level, whatever cardiovascular level you want. It's very simple. Calories, you know, we've been brainwashed about this calorie thing. We count them, we weigh them, we scale them, we're obsessed with them, and they don't make a difference. So, you got to first know, food doesn't make you fat and not all calories are alike. They're not all equal. Now, I know you guys have heard, you know, one gram of fat is nine calories and one gram of carbohydrate and protein is four. What the hell does that mean? Let me tell you what it means. It means if you eat a carbohydrate calorie, you can eat double, more than double, more than double. If you eat double, you're still not up to the amount of calories that you've taken in with half the fat. You can eat double the food first. Easily. Easily. So it's not difficult to increase your volume because you can eat double the food and still not be at the same caloric intake. Your body processes fat calories and carbohydrate calories differently. If you eat 100 calories of carbohydrates, 23% of those calories are utilized in the storing and the processing of that food. Your body uses that fuel, 23%. You eat 100 calories of fat, 3% is used. Your body responds differently to carbohydrate calories and protein calories, They're not, just, not just carbohydrates. Fat is disgusting. It's disgusting. Now, I had a woman say to me recently, I couldn't believe it. She was 400 pounds. She quite honestly said to me, um, you know, I understand this little fat thing. I'm, I'm working with her privately, and I understand what I'm supposed to do. But my doctor told me that I need a teaspoon of oil a day or my skin's going to get dry. <laughs> I, and I, I did. I said very respectfully. I looked at her and said, you have enough fat to live on for about two years. You're in no danger of scaly skin. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You don't need to add fat to your diet. Your body produces the cholesterol it needs. It's excess cholesterol that is killing us all. You do not need to add a teaspoon of oil to your diet every day. Guys, think about this. You want corn oil? Eat corn. That's where it comes from. <laughs> you don't need to eat the corn oil. You don't need to add a little oil to your diet. There are three essential fatty acids that your body does not produce. I cannot pronounce them. I have the name of them, and I'll spell them. I can't even pronounce the words. They're this long. If you eat the most 
basic. Dr. Dean Ornish says this. Colbert Bailey says this. Anybody you read says this that is an expert in the cash field. If you eat the most pathetic example of a standard balanced diet, you will get plenty of the fatty acids you need. You do not need to add fat to your diet. We're fat because we are a fat society. We're not lazy. We're not disgusting. We're not. We're fat because we are eating so much fat and it's killing us. First, it makes us look gross and feel gross, and then it slowly starts to kill us. So fat's really the issue, and there's no way we can have a food workshop and not talk about fat. It's impossible. And again, I hear it's the new buzzword, the buzzword of the 80s, the 90s. Everybody, oh my God, I'm 10 years behind. We hear things. One thing that you keep hearing is that 30% of your daily intake should be fat. And do you know how few people I meet have any clue what that means? I didn't know what it meant a couple years ago. I'm going to explain, and if this is insulting to some of you, I'm sorry. I mean, if this is so simple that there's a lot of people who don't know what this means. When you eat something, since we don't count calories anymore, you need to take everything you eat, and you need to use the fat formula. And the formula, for those who don't know, is you look at the number of grams of fat on every label. The number of grams times 9 equals X, whatever that number is, whatever that number comes out to. You take that number and divide it by the total calories. And what that will do is teach you how much of that food is fat. Now, the AMA says whenever you do that, that's the American Medical Association, whenever you do that, 30% or less should be fat. Well, 30% is a very high standard. And if you've got a lot of fat on you, it's, it's a ridiculously high standard. The jury is out. And I'm not a physician. I'm certainly not a member of the AMA. They wouldn't let me in. But, but... <laughs> Hennigan says 10%, the AMA says 30%. I think somewhere in the middle is very responsible, and if you're real big and have a lot of fat and you're trying to reduce your body fat, it's very safe to say that 15 to 20% of your daily intake. You say that, and when somebody said that to me, I still didn't know what that meant. Here's what it means. If everything you put in your mouth is below 20% fat or up to 20% fat, then your daily intake will never exceed 20% fat. If everything you put in your mouth, everything, is below 20%, then the total percentage of fat for the day out of all the food you've eaten is never going to exceed 20%. So everything you put in your mouth, calculate. Don't ever look at calories other than to work the formula. Again, it doesn't matter how many calories. Well, I'm going to do this fat formula with some food. Because another big issue now is people going to the supermarket. I do it say at Tom Thumb. First of all, they have calculators on the shopping carts at Tom Thumb. Everyone's doing their budget. I'm not. I'm going through that. Oh my God! I can't believe I'm like, Oh my God! Well, what we do because we, we're not, we don't know what to do. We walk by the aisles and we see, we see Jimmy Dean right in, and we think, Oh, this is all fat. I'm gonna eat it. No sausage on earth is all fat. I can tell you that. <laughs> Now, the buzzword of the 90s is light, lean, and low fat. Do not believe it. This is also a lie. I mean, I don't think I'm breaking anybody's bubble by telling you guys that advertisers lie for profit. I mean, I'm saying, you know, I know we're not supposed to be too hard, but come on. Okay, so everything is light. Every, this is extra light. We'll do the extra light first. Everything is light. Everything's lean and everything's low fat, and there is no cholesterol anywhere on earth anymore. So don't believe it. Use your brain. It takes nothing to do this formula. Now, let's, let's just do the formula. Oh, well, you can do this on the cafe because I don't touch jeweled anything. <laughs> it doesn't look good on me, jeweled. Okay. Now, this is what I like the most. This is D's extra light. This is extra light. This isn't even just light. <laughs> no, I love this. Now, let's, get, let's find Dean and shoot him first. <laughs> okay, now watch. There's one gram of fat. So people look at this and they say, oh, my God, there's hardly any fat in this. I'm eating tons of it. It's a bucket. <laughs> one times nine is nine. Now take nine and divide it by 16 calories. And what's the percentage of fat in this thing? Oh, you, get ready. Dean is dead. <laughs> this is 56% fat. Now, I know. Could you die? Now listen to me. Listen to me. You can eat an eight-ounce steak, which you, we don't eat because we all know that kills you, for this. Something. Every bite you take, the first serving, by the way, which you know is like this much. Every time you take a bite, this much. And who the hell eats this much? I eat the bucket for nothing. I want the bucket for nothing. Is that true? Who eats the bucket is you're dead. You're gone. And then you wake up and go, why am I getting so fat? It's not 
not the issue of lazy pig. It's not the issue of my daughter that was given to you by your grandmother that doesn't function like normal people's function. I did. It's because you're in this junk. That's why you're getting fat. Now, if 30% is a high standard, what do you think 56% is? Okay, this is a lie, and you don't need it. You can't. Now, they're going to come up with an extra, 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 extra light version of it, and it'll probably be, you know, 48% fat. This is a very high fat snack. Now, this is quick. It's, it's Dean's Life and Lives with the Cream Chicken. Nice dip. It's, oh, it's onion dip. Okay, now, <laughs> now, here we go. This is a lawsuit city, but here we go. Here's the Weight Watchers. I love Weight Watchers. <laughs> love them, love them, love them. Is that, I gotta tell this story, so some of you ready, but I gotta tell you this. We did a, a seminar recently in Dallas and in Los Angeles for Visions 90 for women. There were 40,000 women walked through that auditorium that week, I'm telling you. I've never seen so many people in my life. And they put me, I was one of their speakers, and they put me in a booth in the diet section. Wrong place. I mean, they're what? They're the diet. Uh, I'm whispering, what? Ah, yeah, this. They were all there. No, you don't know. The Calinetic, 10 pounds in one week, uh, 10 years younger in two days. You should have seen the other one. I mean, never. I mean, never. Weight watches were there. Possibly, the lady was there. Everybody was there. Well, Wayne Watchers was handing out free bags of popcorn. Little, they're new popcorn. It's in the oven. I'm telling you, 40,000 women walked through there, and I'm telling you, I served 30,000 bags of popcorn. Well, what they would do is they would go, because Wayne Watchers was up here, and they would get their free popcorn, because everybody takes anything that's free, and they would open it up, and they'd start eating, and they'd walk down towards me. And we were handing out the fat formula, and people were doing it, and they were finding out that that little snack of popcorn they were eating was 54% fat. And they were turning around <laughs> I had a woman come down. She was very well dressed. I'm sure she lived like in North Dallas, one of those homes my mother used to live in. And she was so mad, she was shaking. She was, and she couldn't just cuss me out right to my face because she's not that kind of woman. She was just like, you, how dare you? Who do you think you are? And I said, I'm not. I'm just telling the truth. I'm not pointing things. I'm not out to talk about anybody. That's a fact. Well, here's White Walter Street. <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to get so many of that. I'll get fascinated in the next three months. All the White Watchers. <laughs> they're going to kill me. Okay, now watch. Let's do it. I'm going to be a formula lady here. Okay, there's five grams of butter. What is five grams of fat? And this shoe gets not much of it. Five times nine is what? And let's divide it by 80. What's the percentage of fat in this cheese? 56. Every time you take a slice of this low fat cheese, it's low fat. 56% is not low fat. 56% is not low fat. This is not low fat, it's a lie. So, so far we're eliminating all the food you love the most. Here we go. Here's another one of my favorite ones. Here's the new mix. Why do like popcorn? Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, we'll do it first. Um, there's two grams of fat. There's no fat. And that's underneath the whole bag. There's only two grams of fat. Two, that's 18 divided by 35. 51. 51% fat. Now, and let me tell you guys something. Popcorn is not a fat food. You could eat, I'm telling you, I've said this once before, and I know I said it on national TV, but I mean this. You can lay in bed with somebody you love or somebody you don't love, or don't lay in bed with anybody at all. <laughs> And you can eat four truckloads of popcorn. I'm telling you. <laughs> truckloads. You can eat popcorn until you throw up. Popcorn will never be 54% fat. This is what, now if you want to eat what Vic has added to this, and Vic's probably this big and loaded too, by the way. Vic's probably like Mr. Skinny, wearing cowboy boots, you know, dancing with a silver dollar every night. Vic's probably some pig. Look, I don't want Vic to make me fat, and that is, has got to be the attitude. Now, you can go through all this stuff, and we will. Oh, I've got to do this. I love this light. Oh, no. Here's my favorite one. No, no, this is my favorite one. Right, no, there's no way. There's one other that's my favorite, favorite ever. Oh, I don't know which one it is. Oh, is it these? Oh, it's these. Okay, here we go. These spicers. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I like. They're for weight control. Um, weight control. <laughs> and there's this much food in Okay? Let's do this one, Irma. Five grams. Five grams. Five grams. Five grams. Five Then divided by 100. Forty-five. Forty-five percent fat for these little suckers. Now, everywhere you go, guys, use this formula. What you're going to find is, and it's sad but true, there is a lot of food that you've been eating and you've had no clue how high in fat it is. Once you start this, you will never eat those foods again because those are the things that are making you fat. Now, then the question is, 
Okay, Susan, we will listen and we will do. Then what the hell do we eat? Open <laughs> word. So we eat. Okay. Food doesn't make you fat. There is so much food out there that you don't even have to think about. You don't even have to think about it. You can eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it. It's called high volume, low fat food. We've used this example once before, but I'm going to use it again because you can't get a better example of this. Everybody knows we don't eat this, but I think there's still a lot of people that do. For a cheeseburger, Burger King, no, I've said a brand name, for a medium fries and a medium shake. You just run, you do just one, I'm just eating this one. You can, what you can have, here's some foods that you can have that, that they are equivalent in fat. You can have 130 cups of noodles. Cups. I'm cooked. So in other words, you can swim in a bathtub of noodles and eat more. You can die eating noodles. You couldn't eat the amount of noodles that you have to eat. You can have 75 cups of brown rice. Have you one cup of conservation is a problem? Not at all. Better go touch your eyes and your bowels will move. I'm telling you, they will move. You can have a good one, 452 cups of lentils. Cups. You can have 250 apples. This is the truth. You can have 900 peaches. Conservation of problem? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> okay, my point in explaining this is what food can we eat? So far, we just named pasta, rice, vegetables, fruits. Now, I know that we all know, because your doctor says, Eat any racial fiber, and eat. we all know that these are good foods, but nobody has any clue what to do with them. And I understand that. I mean, lentil, so good, fine. I'll eat one for cup. What do I do with them? How do I cook them? You don't need to know that yet. Don't let that stop you from understanding the concept that there are three food categories that are the highest volume, lowest fat foods you can take into your mouth. Grains. We're going to talk for just, just a second about grains. You can eat buckets and buckets and buckets and truckloads and buckets and buckets. Grains, rice, barley, uh, couscous, buckley. I know these are some grains you haven't, you haven't heard about, but stay with me. Grains, the real food. Your doctor said to increase your fiber, and what do we do? We go out and get whole wheat bread. That's not how you increase your fiber. That's better than the whole wheat donut. <laughs> but it's still real far away from that real food. You see, the closer to the real food, the better. Now, none of us are going to go out into the field and shuck our own corn every morning. I know that. I, we ought to get real here. But the middle, the food, is the beginning. And then as far away as you are from it, know that the food has less and less value. That's it. So if you are trying to increase your fiber, try eating some grains. Now, we have some food here after this, and we have some recipes and things. But my first suggestion to you, is go out and get a grain cookbook. Just go out and get one. A simple little cookbook on what to do with grains. You would be amazed how easy, how inexpensive, how versatile. Now, that doesn't mean every day you're going to sit down and have a bowl of rice and say, I'm eating grains. This is why I love this. Because you're going to start dreaming about the chop next Sunday real soon, believe me. It means you need to learn about foods that you're not that familiar with. But these foods will do a couple of things. First, they will throw you up like you have never. You know, again, eat a hundred and there's somebody got cups of brown rice and let's see what happens. Second, they will give you the energy your body needs to move and to function. Very important. These other foods don't give you the energy. They give you lots of chemicals. You must freeze them to death. I'll put on the heat. Why are they cold? Oh, well, maybe I am. I am kind of cold. <laughs> there's another food. Beans. I know everybody says, no gas. <laughs> but, really, you can soak the beans. I eat beans all the time. I do not walk around with like the worst gas pump on earth. <laughs> beans are very versatile, very inexpensive, very high protein, very low fat food. Low fat? My God, you can't get much more low fat than beans. You put the two together and you have a complex carbohydrate. That is a perfect food. When people start to change their diet, it's amazing how people are never concerned about their vitamin, mineral, or, you know, supplement intake when they're eating this crap. 
The minute you say eat some good for their way to the world, that vitamin C is going to come from. By the way, 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 you wouldn't do it. You don't need to really worry about that. Now, if you are concerned, you can go and get a chemical breakdown of your diet. I don't know who does that sort of stuff. It's not my deal. You, it's a very easy to find out what you're eating. But it is difficult. It's truly very difficult to not get enough nutrients when you eat real, real, no chemical substitutes, real, low-fat, high-volume foods regularly. <laughs> Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Flip it now because there's more of this. This thing continues. <laughs>